Hi, and welcome to Mindful, Beautiful, and Thriving, a podcast series by Tharaka Foundation focused on youth mental health. Before we begin today's episode, I just wanted to let you all know that all content that is found in our podcast is created for informational purposes only. This content is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, treatment, or therapy. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition, and never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you have heard in this podcast. Thank you so much, and without further ado, let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of our youth series, LGBTQ Plus podcast for Mindful, Beautiful, and Thriving. It's Anya here with my friend Krish, and today we're going to interview Gigi Pastilli. Gigi is part of Safe Space, a nonprofit organization that focuses on mental health. We will ask Gigi some personal questions and some general questions. We also want to remind everyone to treat others the way you want to be treated. No one should be excluded because of who they love and or who they identify as. Now let's go on with the interview. Gigi, can you please introduce yourself? Yeah, hi everyone. Um, I'm Gigi Pastilli. I'm a rising senior at Woodside High School in Woodside, California. And I'm a part of Safe Space, which is that mental health organization. And we work on destigmatizing mental health. And specifically, I'm a part of the Pride Committee. We just hosted a conference for parents and teachers. Um, we raised money for the Trevor Project, all stuff, um, activism for the LGBTQ plus community. And I identify as lesbian and I've been out of the closet since I was 14, I believe. Thank you, Gigi. So now let's get on to the interview. The first question, when and how did you realize that you were a lesbian? Um. So... I think it might be a common sort of trope, but when I was younger, I was one of those girls who was like, oh, I don't like men. Men are gross. I'm so cool. I'm not boy crazy. And then eighth grade happened and I started getting a crush on one of my friends. Um, Ironically, we were both working on a project, a year long project on gay rights. So funny how that happened. And that's kind of how I figured it out. And for a while, I wasn't sure if I was like bi or lesbian. All I knew was that I liked women. And then over the next couple of years, I just decided to identify as lesbian, even though it's not quite that clear cut, but whatever. Thank you for sharing. Now for the next question. Are you comfortable sharing with us about how you came up to your parents about this? If not, that is all right. Yeah, I am comfortable sharing. So I came out to my mom before my dad. This was after like a couple months of me having a crush on this girl. And I'd come out to like my sister, I believe, and like one or two of my friends. And I actually, I told her like, hey, mom, there's something important I need to tell you. So we went like downstairs into like the family room away from other people. And I was like, hey, mom, I like girls. And she was basically like, yeah. I know, like, it's obvious. And then she guessed my crush. So um, that's kind of funny. And then with my dad, so I actually, that girl I had a crush on in eighth grade, we ended up dating. And after a couple weeks of me dating her, I was like, well, I mean, like, I have a girlfriend, maybe I should tell my dad about it. So we were hiking, actually. And I mentioned casually, like, oh, my girlfriend's and I, blah, 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 blah. But that's kind of like a slang, like saying like, oh, me and my girlfriend. So he did not get it. So we like kept walking in silence for two more minutes. And then I just explained it. I'm like, did you catch the part where I'm gay? And then he was like, oh, but I I don't know. Like there were a couple comments that my parents made that were like a little fishy to me, but um, they were accepting. So I'm really lucky. Very interesting. Very interesting. Now on to the next question. In your opinion, in what ways could people learn more about the LGBTQ plus community? Um, I think the best way is just listening to people in the LGBTQ plus community. There are a lot of perspectives and it's important to engage with all of them. I also think that people oftentimes don't go out of their way to learn more, especially about like the trans community. People instead sort of like shut themselves out thinking, oh, there are too many words, too many labels, and this is too confusing. I'm accepting, that's all I need to be. And it's a lot more complicated than that because you can be accepting, but if you're actively perpetuating like transphobia, homophobia, then it can be very damaging, even if you are like, you know, like, oh, I'm not homophobic. So I think that the best thing is just listening and sometimes even going out of your way to learn more about what will make the LGBTQ plus community um, more comfortable. Okay, that's very helpful. 
Um, in addition, what ways do you contribute to the LGBTQ plus community? Um, so I mentioned this a little bit in my introduction, but um, with Safe Space, there's a pride committee, which is sort of like an affinity group. And we've been doing a bunch of projects in Safe Space and in the community at large, trying to raise awareness. So we've put on presentations um, within Safe Space. We've like raised money at farmers markets and stuff. We just recently put on this um, half day conference for um, parents and educators about how to like support and accept the LGBTQ plus youth in their lives. I also, in my middle school, I and a couple of my friends, we petitioned to get rid of the, um, it used to be when you were graduating, you had to, like girls and boys would be paired to walk down like the aisle of graduation. So we got rid of that because it was, you know, a little bit heteronormative. And yeah, so I've done a little bit of activism, I guess, in those aspects. Okay, so have you, ever been subjected to homophobia and if so how did you react yeah so um in eighth grade my girlfriend and I we were dating in secret our circle of friends knew our parents knew after a little bit when we um, ended up telling them but um we didn't want the the school at large to know we were young with no one else in our school maybe like one other kid in the whole history of us being there had been out in middle school and somebody overheard and started telling people. So we were outed. And after that, you know, middle school boys, a lot of oddly like sexual comments about us and like stuff like that. I mean, I think she got it worse. There were some kids who like were like really mean to her specifically. I like people just sort of treated us differently. And there were like weirdly invasive comments as in like, since they knew we were dating, they would like ask very um, not okay questions and they would assume a lot of things, especially since like women loving women relationships are often sexualized. They sort of did that, which made me very, very uncomfortable because I was so young. And um, I don't know, I guess I just had to ignore it kind of. I'm so sorry about that. You said before that you work at Safe Space to advocate for LGBTQ rights and mental health. How do you do that? Well, first of all, um, in the projects we've done, it always has like a focus on mental health because LGBTQ plus youth, especially trans youth, are more susceptible to a lot of just like mental health problems because of the isolation it creates and just like social problems and everything. It's really hard. And I think it's really common among the LGBTQ plus community to suffer from like depression, anxiety, all sorts of stuff, eating disorders. That's a really big one. People don't really realize that like, especially with trans youth, eating disorders are very common. And so um, in our work, we um, try to emphasize how being not just accepting, but also learning and actively trying to engage and um, support the LGBTQ plus community that can really help take the burden off and just trying to understand that like even in like a so-called like liberal area like the bay area it is harder when you are gay or trans from mental health perspective specifically okay um what would you say to someone who just realized they are a lesbian yeah i think that um if you just realized i'd say that just remembering that like it's your thing and it's no one else's. I think that people have a lot of opinions about coming out. Some people have pressured me to come out early saying like, oh, if you don't come out to this person, you're lying to everyone. I've had people say, oh, don't come out yet. You're too young. It might be a phase, it might change. Like, I think that just owning it. And also I feel like there's a lot of stigma around the word lesbian and like specifically, like for a while I did not call myself a lesbian because I just associated that word with sex. Because, like, that's just the way our society is. And I think it's really important to, like, recognize that, like, you being a lesbian doesn't, like, automatically make you, like, predatory or perverted. You're just like anyone else and you're just loving the way you love. And I think that, yeah, it's just, it's nothing to be ashamed about. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I agree with a lot of the stuff what you just said. Everyone should be basically, like equalized if that's a word in a way because everyone is equal and they should be able to love whoever 
they love and it shouldn't really make a difference to anyone um uh, to transition to our next question what was your reaction when you first heard that there was a pride month dedicated to honor the lgbtq plus community um i think that when i first realized that there was a pride month it was like before i realized that i was gay and i thought oh that's awesome that's cool but i think that it came to mean more when i realized that i was because it was nice to know that there was enough like support behind the movement that people thought to recognize it and also understand like the long and like violent history that il- that is like the fight for lgbtq plus rights and i think that there's a lot of like at least discourse within the lgbtq plus community about pride month and how basically like big corporations have used it as like a front for um, false advocacy and stuff like that. You know, like, oh, like something rainbow on your logo doesn't make you automatically progressive. And I think that that's a good critique, but I also think that Pride Month has a symbolic meaning. And I think that it can be really empowering to someone, especially um, in the early stages of their queerness or when they're like, like still in the closet too. Okay. Very inspiring answers here by Gigi Pastilli. We thank you again for taking time to be in this interview and to all the other people out there. Remember to take pride in yourself. You are unique and special in your own ways. It is okay to be yourself and no one should judge you for that. And this concludes the episode. Thank you for listening. You are listening to Mindful, Beautiful and Thriving, a podcast series by Tharika Foundation. As part of our youth series, We will be releasing new episodes every weekend, so make sure to continue to check those out. We hope you enjoyed this podcast, and thank you so much for listening.